Am I the a-hole for ending my relationship after my girlfriend said no to marriage? I, 41 male, have been dating my ex-girlfriend, 39 female, for nearly six years. Our relationship was a good one. After four years together, I informed her family and friends I was going to propose to her while we were on a family vacation and receive their blessing and well wishes. The night I proposed, I tried to make the night as memorable and perfect as possible. I asked her after a nice dinner surrounded by the family, and she said, no, not yet anyways. I was quite hurt honestly and went back to our room to think things out and not overreact. A few hours later, she came to the room and asked me what was wrong and why I left the group. We had a fairly long conversation as to my feelings and a reason to deny my proposal. Turns out, she didn't think I was ready for the commitment just yet. So I took her thoughts to heart and informed her I understand her reasoning. However, I was raised in a way where you take a no for a no, not a maybe next time. She asked me to just wait a bit longer until we were in a stable place, and I agreed. Eight to ten months later, she started dropping hints that she was ready to be married. I can't wait for our wedding. Our wedding is going to be spectacular. I'm so looking forward to my dad walking me down the aisle, etc. A little over a year since my first proposal, I decided to propose again, this time just us together after a wonderful date night. When I opened the ring box, she got really quiet and once again said, no, not yet, maybe a little more down the line. After the second refusal, I fell out of love with her. It sounds cold, but it was the truth. When we got back home, I slept in our guest bedroom and spent the rest of the night thinking of our relationship. The next morning, she asked why I didn't sleep with her in our bedroom, and I told her the truth and informed her that I think we need to end the relationship. I informed her that I take marriage very seriously and I do not want to be led on, and this time, this no was the final no on the subject. I gave her a month to find a new place to live, and since then, I have been receiving texts and emails from her friends and family informing me I am a heartless bastard and trying to get me to give her more time and not be a callous a-hole. My friends have my back on this and understand why I ended the relationship. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. She was stringing you along and being clearly disrespectful. Proud of you for standing up for yourself and seeing her for what she is actually doing. Honestly, I am upset at myself for taking the first no as a not yet. I am still just getting used to this empty house. Don't beat yourself up too badly for that. It's okay that someone isn't ready for marriage. However, at seven years and in your 40s, with a second, it's obvious you both want different things. I don't know, man. Her reason being that he isn't ready for commitment is just a blatant you're not good enough to marry. Definitely should have dropped her. But I can understand why he didn't. It's hard to give up on someone you love. Not the a-hole. You communicated your desire for marriage clearly and gave your girlfriend ample time to consider. Her repeated rejections, despite expressing readiness, indicate the misalignment in your relationship goals. It's your right to end a relationship that doesn't fulfill your needs. I just do not want to be a show pony and have that carrot dangled in front of my face just to never get it. Leave. She's never gonna change her mind. In my world, you either know or you don't. I can get I'm not ready, so maybe the first time, but the second time? Nah, life is too short for this. When people show you who they are, believe them. From your post, I get the feeling this wasn't a surprise for her. AKA, you made it known you wanted to ultimately get married. So homegirl acting like this came out of left field and saying no twice is saying a lot. You deserve better than this. You deserve someone who says yes the first time. Honestly, I am just tired of being told to give her more time or she will come around. After six years, I'd say you have more than done that already. Two no's is the same as never. Just block the people nagging you and move forward. Next story. Am I the a-hole for being pregnant when the reason why my husband and I broke up was because I didn't want children? My ex-husband and I were together from the time we were 15 to 35. The last couple of years were not happy, and the reason was because he had a change of heart about kids. When we met, we were kids and never talked about children. But then we were mid-twenties and both realized we actually didn't want children. 
Our marriage was beautiful, and when it got bad at the end, we chose to end it before we started hating each other and ruining all of the good memories. Only when he moved out did I realize that we actually hadn't been in love for a while, and this in itself was heartbreaking. I never knew how heartbreaking it is to fall out of love with someone who was a big part of your life. Within a year, he had met a woman and she was pregnant. He is married now with two children. He seems happy, and I have spent some time every now and then looking up his life online. And while neither he nor his partner are avid social media users, he seems very happy. When I saw him holding his children or playing with them, I felt immense loneliness, even if I still have my family and friends. Not only him, my siblings around me, my best friends, everyone was having children, and it made me feel more and more lonely. All the people I know have priorities now that aren't us siblings or friends anymore. I felt terrible loneliness all the time. I met my fiancé three years ago. I love him very deeply and I am very happy with him. I told him that I wanted a baby and he was very happy about it. Now I am seven months pregnant, 33 weeks. My ex-husband has heard about it and he is very upset about it. He wants to meet me to talk and his sister told me that. He is angry that I lied to him. But I swear, I didn't lie. I just changed. Our last period together changed me and so are the years after the divorce. Seeing everyone happy around me and I am totally lonely. Even my divorced friends had their children to love and care about and seemed content. I never meant to hurt him. I don't even understand why he is hurt either, because he seems to be very happy and his sister told me that he is. Maybe not the a-hole, but I'm not sure being lonely is a good reason for having a child. It is a horrible reason to have a child. Sigh. Please seek individual counseling. Having kids because everyone else around has them is a big mistake. People like you like the idea of kids but don't want to parent. You're not being fair to yourself or this unborn child. You have bigger problems than worrying about what your ex thinks of you. It's a very common phenomenon, and not only in a negative way, which is a reasonable conclusion from this post in my opinion. People see children as something they may want in the future, but as scary and a commitment that they don't know enough about. Then friends or family have children and you spend time with them and learn and realize that it is something that you could do as well as previously having already considered. It's very normal for friend groups to have children around the same time because that's what is discussed and they have extra insight and support. This is a good point, but I do think it's notable that Opie doesn't at any point talk about how she's discovered she really likes spending time with slash around her friends and family's kids. Just that she sees how happy they are and that they have something to love and she feels lonely. She also doesn't talk about parenthood, just the having a child, which is thin eyes to be relying on when it's 3 a.m. for what seems to be every day since you can remember, and you're being wailed at with feces running down your arms for when they say they hate you, and melt down in public for stopping them running into oncoming traffic, or when they're teens and absolutely do not want to spend any time with you. Actually, wanting kids is what gets you through all the really hard part and out the other side with both of you relatively unscathed. You're the a-hole for following each other. Say goodbye, let go, move on. Neither of them seem to have actually moved on, they just moved out. They were together for 20 years. A couple years is a very short time, considering they spend most of their lives together. It's not gonna be as easy as just move on. When you tangle other innocent people up in your life, you better have moved the heck on. He's got a whole family now. It's literally not his business anymore as to why she changed her mind, especially considering he changed his mind too. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my wife I'm not as excited about the pregnancy since she stopped taking birth control without telling me? So here's the deal. My wife, 31 female, and I, 30 male, have been married for three years, and the plan was to wait a bit longer before having kids. We were enjoying our time together, focused on work, and doing the whole travel while we can thing. Kids were on the horizon, just not yet. Well, a couple of months ago, she told me she was pregnant. I was surprised, happy for her, but definitely surprised. When I asked her how it happened, she confessed that she'd gone off birth control without mentioning it because she felt ready and thought I'd be fine with it once the baby was on the way. 
To say I was caught off guard is an understatement. I get that people change their minds, but it kind of feels like the decision was made for me. I told her I'm not as excited as she is because we didn't decide this together. I also said it felt more like her decision than ours, and now she's upset, saying I'm acting distant and cold about the whole thing. I love her, and I'm sure I loved a kid, but I feel like I didn't get a say in something pretty major, you know. My friends are split. Some say I should just get over it and be happy. Others think she should have talked to me first. So, am I the a-hole for feeling this way? Now for the comments. Not the a-hole. This should have been a mutual decision. She blindsided you after the fact. Exactly. Not the a-hole. Something as big as having a kid should definitely be a mutual decision, not something sprung onto you. It's understandable you feel caught off guard. Not the a-hole. Yikes. And I'd be talking divorce personally. That's not a decision one person gets to unilaterally make. Right? I feel like something as huge as having a kid should be a mutual decision. It's not like choosing what to eat for dinner. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the fact that she thought it was okay to just make that call for both of us. The trust feels pretty wrecked right now. Not sure how to even move forward from this. Not a hole. I'd sit down with her and ask, How would you feel if I told you I'd quit my job so I can go back to school? Be clear you were upset she didn't include you in a major decision. Be very clear that what she did has hurt you, because she placed her once before your marriage. Be clear that her decision impacts your marriage more than if you decided to have a vasectomy and didn't tell her. I need to talk to her about how hurt I am that she made this big decision without me. It really affects our marriage, but I want her to understand it's not just about her. I'll bring up how she'd feel if I made a similar choice on my own. What if I decided I wanted another kid when you were done? So I started microwaving your pills so they wouldn't work. I'd be happy with another kid and you'd eventually be okay with it. Show her this thread, by the way. And remember, you can press charges on this. That's a really good point. If I pulled something like that, there'd be chaos. Sharing this thread might help her see how serious this is. She needs to understand the weight of her actions, and knowing there are legal options is a good reminder. And I don't mean to pile on here, but her action is no different than a woman who gets pregnant intentionally to force a man into a long-term commitment. And while societal norms no longer demand he marry her, she's forced him into providing financially for a child he never agreed to father for her own selfish reasons. I hope you're able to work through it, but once trust is gone, it's extremely difficult to re-establish. Not the a-hole. Last story. Am I the a-hole for choosing to attend my sister's wedding instead of visiting my wife's mother's grave on the third death anniversary? My mother-in-law passed away three years ago and every year on the death anniversary, my wife and I go to her grave where we spend hours in remembrance. My wife was very close with her mother. My wife leaves flowers on a grave and sits on a bench for hours and I do my best to provide support for her and just hold her. My sister is going to get married next month, and she wants me to be her man of honor. It didn't really surprise me when she asked me to be her man of honor, since we were always very close growing up, especially since our father was emotionally abusive. We are now no contact with our father. I was very happy for my sister, especially since she found an amazing guy. I was really looking forward to her wedding, but when I got the save the date notice a few months ago, I realized that my sister's wedding was on my mother-in-law's death anniversary. I knew my sister couldn't postpone the wedding because she had booked a very popular wedding venue, and also because that date aligned with a very important date for her. My wife and I had a discussion and my wife really wanted me to be there with her on the death anniversary and ask if I could skip the wedding. I was really conflicted and even spoke to my sister about it. My sister seemed really sad and I knew how badly she wanted me at the wedding. She was even willing to postpone the wedding to the next available slot for the venue which was next year so that I could attend the wedding. However, I realized that this was really unfair to my sister and I made my decision. I told my wife I would attend my sister's wedding and that I really sympathize with her, but I have known my sister my whole life and I wanted to be there for her wedding. My wife seemed really sad but accepted it. Was I the a-hole? You have made a right decision. 
I think your wife is incredibly selfish to ask you to skip your sister's wedding. Unbelievable. I was shocked when I read that line. You can visit her mother's grave on another day, or your wife can go alone. We celebrate and honor our dead, but life is for the living, and there is no excuse for missing your sister's wedding for a three-year death anniversary. Please go and enjoy your sister's most special day in full without guilt, and celebrate her happiness, not a whole. Life is for the living, right? Because if we start to examine what is actually happening on this graveyard trip, things get creepy quick. This is spending the day staring at a stone that is standing six feet above a pile of warm food and bones. And Opie gets the great pleasure of suffering through that insanity once a year. He can take this year off. We'd like to think this will be the sister's only wedding. But we can definitely presume that she won't be having a wedding every damn year. The bones and stones will still be there next year. It is her choice to grieve however she likes, but no one else can be forced into doing it with her. If it were me, I'd offer to go with her the weekend prior as a compromise. I'm sure mom's ghost wouldn't file a complaint with a scheduling team. Not a hole. I lost my dad in 2014 and I lost a son last summer. So I understand how gut-wrenching the first anniversary is. But it's been three years. It's not as fresh. And time has a way of helping us deal with the grief. While I totally understand your wife still wanting to visit her mom's grave, I don't think it's fair to expect you to skip your sister's wedding to be there for her. I don't think it's fair to your sister or to you. Go to your sister's wedding. Check in on your wife and let her know you're thinking about her. But go have fun at your sister's wedding. Honestly, I think your wife is a bit of an a-hole not to go to your sister's wedding too. Life goes on. She can visit her mom's grave another day. It's not that big a deal to visit a different day. Or if the mother-in-law's grave isn't too far away, they could visit it in the morning before the wedding. My mom passed four years ago, so I get the grief that his wife is experiencing. But at the same time, I don't think my mom would be happy if I made my spouse miss his family's celebration just to mourn her. She'd want us to celebrate something happy on a day associated with sadness. My mom died last September 3rd, dad 10 days later. This year, nestled in the middle was my husband and I's 25th wedding anniversary. My mother and dad come from pragmatic stock, so I booked a table at a fancy restaurant. We got new duds, enjoyed ourselves. They would have hated to have our dinner reservations ruined, 